Welcome back to Spawn's Garage. <laughs> Hello ladies, in this video I will be converting this bone stock 305 TBI 3rd gen Camaro into a street beast. It's going to be a complete build from front to back. I'm going to ditch the 305 and we're shoehorning in a 400 small block. And that's going to be built for boost. It's going to have a dart block and all forged internals with AFR heads and a 750 double pumper Holly carb. Now I already have a video of the engine being dynoed and it was built by Glenn over at BNB Machine on Long Island and the engine made over 500 foot pounds of torque and 480 horsepower. And I'm going to post that link to that video in the description below. In the front end everything's going to be new also. We're going to have a tubular K-member, tubular control arms, a coilover setup and aftermarket strut mounts. It's going to have a 704 from level 10 built to handle about 900 horsepower. We're also throwing in a 49 inch in the back and doing all sorts of other stuff to this car. And since this is a big build, I'm going to try and breeze through certain parts in an effort not to make it over a 10 hour long video. So let's begin. So this is what it looks like before surgery. So what we're going to do is usually people take everything out from the top since we're changing the cam member and have access to this wonderful bent pack lift. I'm going to drop everything from the bottom of the car. First thing I'm going to do is obviously take the strut tower brace off, the bar. Then I'm going to take the strut towers off. And I'm going to take the, whole, the front uh, spindle off on both sides in the front. So I'm going to go ahead and start that now. Grab her and yank her off. Now I'm going to take this nut off. That's a 13 16 Be careful when you pop this off. The wheel's gonna wanna hang down. So, go ahead and take that off. Now when you do that, be very careful. I didn't mention you, sh you should have put a jack underneath the control arm here. So, when that happens, just lower the jack very, very slowly. And everything here ends up like this. There's different ways of doing this. I'm gonna take all this off in one shot. That's why I did it this way. I'm gonna take we're going to replace these rubber hoses, these brake hoses, so it's good to, it's okay to let it hang from there. And the spring's not going to pop out. So all I got to do now is just take the end links off, the tie rod off, and the brake hose obviously, and the ball joint on the control arm. And I'm just going to take this whole thing as one unit off the car. Pop this out. Out of tie rod, 18 mil. 22 mil. Okay, now this one I'm gonna leave threaded. I'm gonna pop this now. All right, so we're gonna start off with the clown hammer and that pickle fork just to get started. Brianna, let me see that hammer, Brianna. Oh, that's Real nice. Real small. Your hammer is very tiny, Brianna. I know, thanks. All right, all right, we are good. Cut the brake line. Put a bolt in here. Stop the brakes from bleeding all the way. Take the lower ball joint nut off all the way now. And now the whole thing's gonna come right out. Just like that. We're gonna cut the side link off. Yeah, baby. So this is where it gets fun, boys and girls. Now I'm going to lower the jack. I'm going to stick this in here so this doesn't pop out. Uh, there's different ways of doing this. You could put a spring compressor in here from the bottom and try to compress it. Then lower this down and bring it out. Or the way I do it, the clown dangerous way, you just stick a pry bar in here and try prying it out. So, now lower the jack. Alright. Alright, that should come right out now. Yeah, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Is it safe yet? No, oh, Brianna. Go back into your corner. Oh, wow. You did nice. it, clown. Did I slid her out too? 
Now take this exhaust off. Okay, now we gotta take this, these two bolts here that hold the hanger for the exhaust. These are 15 millimeter here. Okay, now this side of the collector, I also, the other side of the collector is all done. So this is the last bolt. Go ahead and take this off. This should all come out now. Just gotta get that thing out of the way. Alright. Now take the Pitman arm nut off. And use the Pitman arm puller. Guide lower mount is 18 millimeters. Now the top one. Alright, so I had a nut here, loosely on here for the pitman arm. Now the eye lower arm is off, and this whole thing should come right out. Just like that. Do the transmission lines. Ooh! Woo! Get the torque converter cover off. Bolts are off. Okay, now I'm going to unbolt the transmission. I uh, use a pry bar here and just turn this until you get bolts lined up over here. Now put a pair of vice grips here so when you crack and loose that bolt, the flex plate doesn't turn. And that's a 15 millimeter. And it comes off just like that. Now undo the rest of the bolts on this. Now undo the lower radiator hose, that's a 5 16 she's, she's a squirter. Yeah, look at that. Take the oil pressure sensor off. The water temp sensor on the driver's side. The oxygen sensor. The knock sensor, squeeze the sides, it pops right off. The cooling fan switch, where the head is on the passenger side. You squeeze the sides, and it pops out. And the starter wire here, the S wire, ignition. And these wires here, the big fat wires, the battery wires, these are 13 millimeter nut on those. Upper radiator hoses, 5 16 Unplug the alternator. Now the radiator support cover. Comes right off. We took the coolant hoses off here too on top. Now this whole thing pops right out. Take the coolant temperature sensor for the computer. Pop that off. AC plugs. Pop those off. Okay, take the injector plugs out. Those bad boys out. This is all we're gonna go on, we're going carbs, so we don't need any of this crap. Uh, TPS sensor, IAC. I can actually just cut this. So I think I'm just going to cut this snip, snip. Bye bye TBI. Vacuum line. All right, so there's also one wire that goes to a junction over here. I took that off. It's got a fusible link on there. I just pull this whole thing up through the back here. <clears throat> Gotta love them wires, baby. And that's the whole harness right there. Now we're taking the sway bar off. There's a 
whole thing comes right out. Alright, so we just loosened one of the power steering lines right there. And now the low pressure side. Okay, now we're going to grab a pick and pop the seal on this. Go all the way in there, baby. Stick that shit in there. There you go. Yeah, we're good. The hose moved. Now we can just pop it out. There we go. Oh, yeah. Woo! So the steering pump is disconnected. Okay, now we're going to take the drive shaft out with a 716 volt. On the other side. All right, so we're gonna pop the drive shaft forward, just like that. And as this comes out of the tail shaft, I'm gonna plug her up. Well, this is the shaft we're supposed to. And right there, there's a two 15 millimeter. There's actually one, sorry, one 15 millimeter bolt that goes to the top of this tail shaft that goes through the torque arm. Okay, that's not gonna come off. So we could just, yep, leave it right there. We're gonna take the torque arm off, the two bolts in the back over here. Alright, so we stick a little pry bar in here. We're gonna take this torque arm off, pry it right off. And I also have something here to catch it, a jack. We got one more bolt up there, it's a 13. And there's a nut welded inside that shackle. So you just gotta do undo one side. And this whole torque arm clam shell opens up and you could slide the torque arm right out. Now the transmission cross member is a 15 millimeter bolt. Now the transmission mount. Now take the transmission shift lever bracket off. These are two 13 millimeters. That's a 15 millimeter. Pop that off. Take this off the transmission. Pop this off the transmission as well. Okay, so I took a universal joint and put some black tape around it so it doesn't swivel too much. And I put a 14 millimeter socket on there with a nice long extension. And we're gonna go, get, go ahead and unbolt the transmission bell housing from the block. Underneath the transmission, we put a jack. We'll just put a strap here as a backup, but we're gonna take the strap off. And as we um, once I unbolt the transmission from the engine, we're gonna take the strap off and lower it slowly with this and move it with the pry bar the transmission back towards the back of the car and drop the transmission down. So let's go ahead and take these bolts off here. All right, now stick it in there. And let's undo that. Ah, woo! Baby! Okay, so for that bolt, I put a flex head ratcheting wrench on it. And another wrench here for more torque. Go ahead and crank, crack that loose. Just like that. goes that. Okay, we put a super long extension for the top bolt. There we go, yeah baby. Woo! And if you zoom out, you'll see the big extension that I used. One bolt here. There. Now this one. Yeah, baby. Now the last one is right there. 
Okay, it's on there. Now to crack it loose. Ah, that was easy. Pop the dipstick tube out, just to give us a little better clearance. Okay, now we're taking the TV cable off from the top. Now pinch this bad boy here and push it out, just like that. All right, so I pulled the, the TV cable from underneath, and now we're ready to pull this trans out. And all I'm going to do now is put this pry bar over here and try to move the torque converter away from the flex plate a little bit because there's dowel pins on top where the bell housing of the trans goes into the block. So let's do that. This trans is about 155 pounds, so two guys should be able to manhandle it. Make sure you got your big boy pants on. <laughs> Moisha likes it when I manhandle things. Yep. Yeah, you got the front of that? Yep. And she's out. Now that we took the transmission out, there's two ground points in the back of the head. There's a 14 millimeter. There's one here and one on the other side over here, over there. So we're just gonna take those off. The best way to do this is a flex head, ratcheting wrench to get to all the stuff behind the engine. And do the same thing on the other side. So we take the belt off, we're going to take these brackets off here. These are T45s over here. So go ahead and take these two off. All right, I don't want to bore you guys. We're basically taking this bracket off because we're going to get it painted. Uh, we're also going to take that bracket off. There's such a bunch of bolts here. Uh, this one we're not going to empty out the Freon, so we're just going to bring it out off the bracket. Good. Bring it. And put it to the side for now. There's three bolts that hold that compressor in. There you go. And we're just going to bungee it to the side for now. Under the fuel lines. Cruise control cable and a throttle cable. Rip off. This pops right out. To the half inch bolt, take the coil off. Alright. That's the bolt down there. Now when you do this, you can actually pop this forward here to pop it out. Pop the brake booster off. Get distributor wrench on that hold down. Nice Pop. customer. <laughs> Pop. And we're gonna take this off because we're dropping the engine from underneath. We don't want to risk scratching the firewall. So there you go. <sighs> We're going to cut that heater hose that goes to the intake manifold with a pair of dikes. Gotta love the dikes. Okay, now we're going to cut the brake lines because we have all new brake lines. So I'm just going to cut it here. This goes to the front, this here goes to the front, and this goes to the back. So I'm going to move the ones that go to the front over to clear the one that goes to the back. So when we drop everything from underneath, we have enough room. Bend these out of the way. And make sure this is free over here. 
watch it is. Okay, now the last piece of the puzzle here. Take these brake lines off this frame bracket. And do the same thing on the other side. Now we're gonna start taking the K-member off. I'm gonna take the front braces off. There's two of these, one on each side of the K-member. These are 15 millimeter bolts. And we're gonna use this on the new K-member, the tubular K-member we're putting in. So go ahead and take this off. All right, so I'm gonna drop the whole K-member now with the engine. We're gonna put it on this bench that has wheels on it. Uh, there's three 18 millimeter bolts to hold this K-member to the frame. One, two over there, and three right there on each side. So that's the only thing that's holding this thing in place. So we're going ahead now and loosen those, and it'll drop on this bench, and we're gonna lift the car up with the lift. She's out. It's the last bolt. She's going to drop. And she's out. All right. Let's raise the car. Everything looks like it's clearing nicely, even with the headers in place. Uh, raise the car. Yeah, baby. We're good to go. So everything is out in one shot with the headers and all. Gotta love it. What a pretty sight. Nice and clean and empty engine bay over here. All right, so you take these bolts off here, and we're taking this shell out and this clamshell here for the motor mounts. So all this stuff is coming out going down the new uh, you know. All right. So it's dropped off the K-member, now it's a 14 millimeter bolt here. All right, so these are 15 millimeter bolts here and nuts on the other side. This is how you get to this one to get the clamshell out. Get this one. I put a swivel in to get this one. It comes right out. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing on this side. All right, now we're gonna prep the engine bay. We're gonna take the battery out, the coolant reservoir out. We're gonna take a bunch of stuff out. We're gonna take the Chuggle canister out. And this we're not going to put back in the chuggle canister because this will be an off road car now. And we're going to pour 15 underneath the tunnel where it's really bad with the rust. And just paint the engine bay black over here. So we're going to go ahead and prep this now. So everything's ripped out over here. And we're going to take the fuel lines out. These are 10 millimeter bolts here. and rip all these out. And 
this whole thing is going to come right out. I'm going to raise the car up and take it out the rest of the way. Okay, now we're going to cut the feed line from up here and we're going to stick a butt plug, I mean a screw in there, just so the gas doesn't come running out on us. Ah, there you go! Alright, that should be good. Okay, now we're going to cut the other two. One was for the return line, one was for the charcoal canister. Okay, so now I'm going to take these three lines out. I gotta be careful with this brake line. This is actually new on here. So let's take this apart here. Ah, we got some spillage, boys and girls. Whoa! And that's everything. Now over here I'm just cleaning up the wires in the engine bay. Some of the wires I pulled out of here were the wires for the injectors, for the TPS sensor and stuff like that. And I just pulled them out all the way up here and terminated them on top. Right over here. And I'll show you what I used to terminate them. I'm putting these closed end connectors. This is part number Dorman, part number 8. 5492 and whenever you cut a wire I like to terminate them with one of these and you crimp it on there to make sure nothing crosses or anything like that. So just go ahead and put some tape on here and that piece is done. This is what I'm using to loom everything this split loom here. I already did part of it and I'm just going to do the rest of the harness right now. Okay, we're also putting a Ron Francis ground strap, part number RFW GC12, and it's a 12 inch strap, and it goes from here to the back of the head. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that on. Okay, so the motor came home to Papa. We're like a proud new father over here. Looking at this thing. And we're painting the block. Of course the block is bare. We taped everything off here. And we're using this paint. It's a Pour 15. It's engine paint. Engine enamel from Pour 15. And we're just going to go ahead and paint this whole thing. Alright, so we're getting ready to put the water pump on. One thing to note here, this block this bypass hole over here, they don't have it on this, dot, on this dark block. When you see on the water pump, there's another hole right here. That's for the bypass. So what we're going to do is we're going to drill, drill small little holes on the, on the thermostat. Um, usually if you have a heater core, you're fine, but we're just going to do that. Just to give us a little extra flow. Okay, now we're going to put the water pump on. Now over here, my helper put the gaskets on the block, but we're going to take them off, put it on the water pump. And we're also using liquid Teflon on the water pump bolts. Now put it on. And we're done. Alright, so these are the shackles that go on the engine. Uh, we marked which is forward and which is driver and passenger. So we put exactly where they went when we took it off. And we're going to put these bolts on with some red thread locker on them. And we're good. All right, this one's on too. All right, so these are the clamshell motor mounts. We also marked these, this is driver's side with a D. 
and this is forward. So there's different ways of doing this. I just drilled this out with the drill bit. There's, these are riveted in place here. Or you could just pop one off and just bend it open and take them out and put the new ones in. We're using the profane mounts, urethane mounts. These are part number 7-506. And these go in like this. But you have to make sure the orientation is the exact same orientation as when you took them out. Uh, what I do I like to do is just take a picture of them sitting in the cradle. So according to my picture, this is going to go like this. And this is the front of the driver's side. So I put this zip tie here and I'm going to put the other side in a vise. Clamp this down and put the other zip tie. And we're good. Okay, we're using a Spawn K member. So they supply you with bolts. What you got to do is... They don't fit here, so you gotta drill these out. So, I'm gonna do that to all four holes. Now, ready to stick it in. And we're good. Pop her in, baby. No bueno. Alright, so we aligned this, we put this in, that's not a big deal. Now the other side, somebody holding it on the other side, pulling it up. Uh, let me see. Now for the stock heater hose stuff, we got a heater hose nipple and a 3 8 NPT on the other end of that and we're just going to thread it in there and tighten her down. We're good. Alright, so now we have the engine on the engine stand here underneath the car and we're going to lower the car on it. One thing to keep in mind too, there's a dowel pin here. So this goes up over here. And the bolt's gonna go here. So there's three bolts on each side. Let's lower her down. Make her accept it. Force it in. Uh, uh. All right, so we're close enough now. We catch these back bolts here. Go ahead and do that. Okay, that actually went in. So. Go ahead and put these bolts in. Okay, we're just going to tighten down these bolts now, all six of them. We're not going to torque them down yet though. And over here, we just put a jack, because the engine doesn't sit straight on the engine stand, so we jacked it up a little bit to maneuver this in. So once we tighten these down, all six, we're going to pop the engine stand off and take this uh, jack off the bottom. And this is all torqued down to 65 foot pounds. Okay, now to put the braces here. It goes to get new braces from Spawn. All the hardware is here, over here. And you just gotta put the old hardware over here in the corner. Let's go ahead and put this on now. And we are good. Okay, now we'll put the control arms, control arms in. They're tubular control arms. Pop these in. Good. Alright, you gotta put synthetic silicone based grease here. Four or five pumps on each bushing. One, two, three, four. And same thing on this side and on the other ones. Okay, now we're putting the spawn coilover kit in. And this plate is the reinforcing plate that goes under here. Because that's a lot of pressure over here, and this will. This will push everything up if you don't put this underneath. Anyway, this comes with the kit. So align these slots with what's in here. Now the only thing here is this doesn't sit flush, flat. So you gotta grind some spots here to make it sit flush. And I'm just gonna mark here what we need to grind off. I'm gonna go ahead and grind this. 
All right, so we ground that down. We're also gonna paint this. Uh, this is the plate that holds, that retains the bolts in place. So, just gotta screw those in. Okay, so you guys start the threads on your own over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and drive all these down. And that's the last one. We just finished painting the retaining plate, so while it dries up, I'm gonna put the spindle in. These are shocks we're putting in. This is also from Spawn's website. That's the part number. These are QA1s, adjustable shocks, single adjustable. All right, now the problem here is this bolt hole doesn't line up here. I put one in, so it hits back here. So what we gotta do is gotta grind the spindle all over here to clear this. So we'll go ahead and do that. All right, now we grinded it down and it all fits. So we'll show you in a minute what it looks like, how much we ground down. That's what it looks like. So I'll go ahead and paint that. And we are good. All right, now this plate's ready to be installed. I'm gonna hold these bolts with a ratchet while he tines up the top. And we're done. Okay, now this is a sleeve that goes over the shock body over here. If it's not tight like this, it's a good idea to put some masking tape around here to get it tight so it won't move around. And now this is the lock nut, and this is the adjuster. And put the lock nut in first. And put the adjuster on top of that. Okay, the kit comes with uh, metal washers and torque bearings here. So you put these together like this, and you put it on the bottom of this where the spring's gonna sit, so you can actually adjust it. It'll be easy, it'll just roll on it. Now put this on the shock, and we have the QA1s, the springs for the front. That goes in here like this. Uh, I'm not gonna put that in yet, because on top of this, we're also putting two washers and a Torrington bearing in the middle. Just like that, and we're gonna tape this so it doesn't we don't it doesn't fall off. Alright, and that's how that looks. Alright, now take the shaft and take it out. Take your spring, pop it in. Line it here. Push it in the hole, baby. Align it right there. And push it up. Just like that. All right, now the nut on top, that caught. And driver all the way down and towards the end. Like over here, you see that's turning. Put a open end there, keep it from spinning. And tighten her down. And Brianna. we're done! Sorry, Brianna. Okay, I'm putting two senders on now for the oil. One's for the warning light, and one is for the oil pressure gauge. And this is what I'm using, a street elbow here, an eighth inch by an eighth inch, 
one's male, one's female, and this is the nipple I'm using, eighth inch, and this is both male, it's an inch and a half length, and a T, eighth inch, and female. This is what it looks like all together. So I'm just going to put Teflon tape over here. I'm not going to put paste because uh, if the paste goes into all galleys, that's not good. And that's what it looks like. And I'm going to put that in the back over here. There's a pipe plug where the distributor is. There's a pipe plug. You can also put it right above the oil filter. There's a pipe plug there too. So I'm going to use Teflon tape on all these fittings here. And you go with the threads. And I leave a couple of threads exposed just in case you don't want this also going to the old galleys like I said before. Okay, so I'm just going to do all of them like that. Okay, now you pop it in the hole from behind. And we're good. Put the studs in there. On this one, we put anti seize because it's going from a aluminum head to a steel thread. And there's a stud in the bottom. And just put this on. Now put the nuts on. A little trick here. Put a little towel over there. And now you could just put it in. Put it in the hole. That one. That one too. And everything's nice and tight. Connect the power steering hose. Uh, we also put the alternator on. We clock this over. I have a video on how to clock an alternator. I'll put that in the description below. So this doesn't hit the valve cover. All right, now we're gonna put the left side bracket on. The stud there, put that on. We have the smog pump delete pulley right there. We put that on. That part number is 1546169. And put a nut there. And there's two bolts on the bottom. The AC compressor in. We had to take the valve cover off to fit this. And we're done here. We're gonna put the valve cover back on. This is the ground wire coming from the negative side of the battery that grounds straight to the engine. So I cleaned everything up. It goes back here. And we're good. All right, now we're putting the crank pulley on. And in order to torque that down, we're going to also put the flex plate on later and put vice grips in the flex plate and torque that main crank bolt down. So you get the idea over here. I don't think we have to show you this. Alright, so we're going to undo the end links here, put the front sway bar in, and the other side's already caught. Alright, bushing. And spacer, I mean washer, and nut on top, 14 millimeter nut. Leave that loose. Then push this up. We have a wonder bar too. Push it up here. Alright, so we push this up. Tighten that down. Just so gonna tighten that down, and this whole sway bar is in. There's nothing really to this. And we're gonna tighten down those end links when the car is on the ground to preload it. Okay, now we're putting the grounds in the back of the block. There's two on that side. And we got the big, thick one. And we got, I believe, two on this side too. And the studs in the back of the heads we put on there from the old head. Alrighty. <coughs> okay, we're gonna put the flex plate on now. This is an SFI certified plate from ATI, it's the part number 915541 and this is a nice piece and we're putting in 
these ARP, the Pro Bolts. These have a 200 psi, 200,000 psi tensile strength. So we're gonna go ahead and put this in. Oh, one thing you gotta note here when you're putting this in, make sure this sits flush, or else you might have to champ for these holes a little bit. This one's good. These are 12 point three quarter inch socket to use on this. So we're gonna go ahead and put the flex plate on. All right, now this says engine side here. So we'll flip this around. And you got the three holes here. It's gonna go right, like, just like that. Put some ARP lube on the underside of the head. Also put some red thread locker on the threads. All right, so I lined up the bolt holes. What I'm gonna do is, this is sitting out a little bit. It needs to be driven in. I'm gonna drive in with the bolts. So, I'm gonna put them all in like this and hand tighten them for now. All right, so they're all in. I'm gonna go star pattern and slowly tighten this down until the flex plate seats onto the crank snout. You can see it's getting pushed in. All right, now I like to put a vice grip here to wedge the flywheel. Now we can torque this to 85 foot-pounds using a star pattern again. And the last one. And we take the vice grip off. We're all done with this flex plate. Now we're gonna torque down the crank pulley bolt and that's down to 70 foot-pounds. And we're gonna do the same trick here with the vice grip. Put it up against this block so it doesn't turn. Go ahead and do that now. And we are done. All right, so we're gonna put mis miscellaneous items on here now. I don't wanna really show this to you guys because it's just regular brakes we're putting on. And we got inner and outer bearings. We got a brake hose. One for each side and different part numbers. Also, we have a seal. This goes in the back of the rotor. I'll show you in a second. These seals also. And these are the part numbers. And that's the part number for this seal. These are the rotors we're putting on. The rotors already come with races in here. And that seal goes back here once you put both bearings in, you can pop this seal, just hammer it in. Put a little grease when you put this on. That's pretty much it. So we're just gonna go ahead and put all this stuff on, all the brakes. All right, so we got a new water temperature sensor for the, it's actually a switch for the fan. And that's the part number, AC Delco. We're gonna put that in the head. Okay, so this is what we're putting here. This is part number OER, that's the part number. That's the temperature gauge inside the car. We put some thread sealant on the threads. Go ahead and put that right here. This is for the autometer gauge. Okay, this is the, flat, the exhaust gaskets we're putting in. These are Remflex, that's a part number. These are real nice. We're putting these header bolts on. These are, this is a part number, 400-1110. And these have, have 5 16th heads on top, so you could get to them. They're nice and small, so you could crank them down with a socket or an open end. So go ahead. And I also put some red RTV on the bolts. All right, so this V should be where the sensor is, so you can get to it. Go ahead and put this on. Bang into everything. So every, all the paint comes off. And 
and don't put it in all the way because you may need to move the header around. Alright. And that one's in too. And this is why a 516 hex head works nice over here because look, you have all the clearance in the world next to that primary tube. So, you can go ahead and tighten these down from the inside out. And they're all nice and tight. Now for the passenger side, you have to put it in from the bottom. Especially if you still have the AC stuff in here. And once you get it in, it's just like the driver's side. Same exact procedure. Alright, so the headers are in. Alright, so we're putting this starter in. It's MSD 5095. This is a great starter. And we're gonna do it, we just we, we actually mocked it up just to pop the pinion out to see if we need to shim it or clock it anywhere, everything clears. So we actually never even touched this thing. It's perfect. So now we're just gonna crank these down a little bit. We had to put some washes to space these out because uh, the bolt was really, really eating into the block. So we're just gonna crank those two 916 bolts down. All right, now we're gonna pop the pinion out and show you guys what we did. In here, you want to have at least a paper clip size hole, and that's actually perfect. So we is good. All right, now I'm just going to put the starter wires back on. Okay, good. Okay, we're going to put this heat shield on here. I have my lovely model assistant with her hairy arms to put this in. Yeah, that's me. Nice uh, with feminine my voice. Feminine voice. Uh, I'm gonna wrap this thing like a mummy or a body you're trying to get rid of. And then we're gonna... No kinks. No kinks, right? As long as it's and around. it comes with metal zip ties. You want to use metal zip ties here. Hold one. Because it's gonna be close to the exhaust. <laughs> okay, all right, hold on. Oh. Got my lovely dikes there. Snip that. Trick is to cut this about an inch long and then fold the back up. Fold it so the sharp edges on the inside so you don't get cut if you're working on it. Okay. All right. And we are That's good it. with the starter. All right, so we mocked up the white pipe here on the Dino Dons, and this is seven quart pan here, and it's hitting up here, and as you can see here, it doesn't line up. Shoot it from this so, side. So, so you can really see, see how far off it is. Show you how off it is right there. So, so we're gonna, yeah, well. it's about an inch and a half, maybe. Yeah, about an inch and a half inch. So we're gonna, do, we're gonna have to cut this. Weld the piece in there, twist it around, weld it, and get a little funky. So that's what we're gonna do now. Okay, we have an old exhaust pipe that was down here already. <coughs> I'm just gonna cut that down and try to make this tube fit right over there. All right, so this is what we came up with. We just tacked it there, and it clears everything. With a lot of clearance, Clarence, it's good. So he's gonna take that white pipe down and weld it all around. All right, so we got everything on here. Let's go ahead and fill this up now. That's the finished product. It's all welded over here. And 
and everything clears. This is the dipstick tube we're putting in. And since this is a dark block, this is pretty much the one you need to get from low car. So what I like to do with these is cut this hole open. So all I have to do with the header bolt is just back it out a little bit and slide this behind it and tighten it back down. Also make it easier for you in the future if you ever want to take this dipstick tube out. Because to actually get that center header bolt out, you have to move the whole header back. All right, I put a little bit of oil over here on the seal. I'm also gonna put a little bead of black RTV under here, just to further prevent any leaks. There we go, nice and tight. All right, so I backed the bolt out and that goes right there. So now I'll go ahead and tighten that bolt down. And insert shaft in the hole. All right, over here now we're taking the rear end out of the car and we're also taking the gas tank out because we're making custom fuel lines. And once we put those in, we're also gonna put a Moser nine inch in here. So now I'm just gonna show brief clips of us taking everything out. Come on, let's get this And the bar comes out. Disconnect the main brake line, go into the rear end. Check this up a little bit. We gotta go into the fucking body. Somebody likes to see that. That bolt has to go into the frame over there. Over here. So now this is loose. Where's the loop? Everything was in there? Yeah. And that side. Also out. Now this whole wrench should just flop right out. Money shot. Be careful, we run my full. All right. Good. If you do it gently. So now the only thing holding this is the transmission jack. All right, so now this thing should just drop down. And down she goes. Down out. Then take these bolts off over here. All right, and that's good. Take it off. Yep. Well, exhaust is out. Shield off. Just a couple bolts, screws that hold that in place. You pop that out. You can see everything you're doing over there with the fuel neck, the gas tank. Pull the shot down. This 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 down. This. Hold on, you American trying to clear. Pivot. Pivot. Now we take that sending unit off. Uh, I like to spray some brake parts cleaner in here, clean it up. Also some compressed air is good to clean this area out. So when you take this up, when you take this out, I mean, you don't get any debris in there. So I'm going to do that. She's a little dirty here. Undercoating. Oh, it's undercoating. Okay. All right, now we gotta slide this retaining ring out. Uh, it goes counterclockwise, and you need a brass punch because this is a, this doesn't uh, make any sparks, and a rubber mallet. So this tabs over here. It's got to hit these that way around. So we'll go ahead and do that. Out she comes. All right, so this is the feed to 3 8 line. And we're gonna cut this one over here somewhere. And this is the return line. We're gonna cut this one over here. And this is the line we're gonna use as a return. So we're gonna cut this whole thing. This is our vent. So 3 8 line, we're going to keep that, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Alright, now the first thing of business here, we're going to cut this, so we could take this line out. 
and that will be off. This will be our return line. So cut this right in the middle over there. Just gonna pull it up a little bit now. Just like that. Okay. And now the other side. I'm going to cut this line over here. Just like that. All right, now you cut over here. So for the return line, it's going to go over here. It's going to be a dash six. So let me just take this thing off here. Okay, now we gotta fit this bulkhead fitting over here. So I'm just gonna use this to make a hole over here. And you stick it in and make the hole larger. Okay, so we elongated, elongated the hole a little more this way. Now go ahead and use a step drill bit to get it nice and round. And she's in! Okay, if I'm doing all that, you get a little bit of a lip here. So I just use a stone and take that lip off. So this is the part number for the bulkhead, Russell part number, and this is the part number for the nut, right here. The part number for the fitting we're going to use, we're going to use a PowerFlex EnduraShine steel fitting for, for power steering hoses, because we're using Teflon lines, and these are the Teflon washers. All right, so the return line is going to be like this. I'm just going to cut it here for now, longer, and then I'm going to trim it to size. So I'm going to cut this here now. All right, so I'm just going to show you how to make this once. I'm not going to show you the other lines that I'm going to do because... Oh. We'll be here all day. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Moisha. <laughs> Took the words out of my mouth. So all right, these are the lines we're going to use. This is the Teflon hose. Normally what you would do is put this in, sorry. Put this in like this, and you leave the threaded piece on top. Keep that in there. Now what you want to do is open this up. So what I like to do is take a pair of needle nose pliers, pop it in the hole, and stretch it out. Once you do that, you take this and stretch it out even more. As you see this steel braiding has frayed out a little bit. That's what you want. So once I do that I also, I also like to use a little flathead just to go in there and peel off the steel braiding a little bit more. Okay so that's good. Next, next order of business is this olive. You just pop this in the tapered side going in like this. And as you can see, it's pushed all the way to the edge over there. That's where you want it. And you want this to be fairly straight. You could also push down on a flat surface to get that in there. Actually, that is pretty good, so I'm going to leave that. Now you pull this up, making sure the olive is still seated where it was at before. And push that up like that. And now you take the other end of the fitting. I like to use some lube. Or you could use a little bit of motor oil here. On the threads and on the actual pipe. 
you go ahead and stick it in the hole. Sometimes you gotta wiggle it before you stick it. Do you approve, Moesha? You're supposed to jiggle it. Jiggle it. There you go. And always try to catch a couple of threads by hand. And which we just did. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this down. Put this on my vise. Now these are steel fittings, these Endurashine fittings. So you don't have to use any special AN wrenches on this. That's a one, sorry, that's 11 16 open end I'm, I'm using over here. Just crank her down. And you're done. And once I'm done, I like oh. to blow it out with some air. That feels good. I know, Moisha, I know. Okay, now we're gonna tie in the bulkhead connector. I have a socket on there and a, an adjustable wrench in the bottom holding it in place. That should be good. And that's what it looks like. And we are good. Okay, now for the feed, we're using a Stash 6 tube sleeve. That's the part number from Russell. And a tube nut, that's the part number, the Dash 6. And Dash 6 is equivalent to a 3 8 pipe. So, they go in like this. So we put the tube nut on first, then the sleeve. Put that all the way in the back. This is nice and clean. And we have a 37 degree flaring tool from Rigid. And pop that sucker on here. While my camera girl assists me here. And that should sit a little flush. It could stick out a little bit from the block. It should be good there. And you turn this until a it snaps. <clears throat> yep, it snapped. And now you go back with it. And it's a real nice flare. Okay, I'm gonna use this union. That's the Russell part number. This is a dash eight male, eight male to a dash six male. Now what we can do here is we're gonna feed, this is gonna be a carbureted motor, so we're converting this to a dash eight feed, and this should be fine. We have a TPI pump in here. We're just gonna regulate it down to five, six PSI. When we do a supercharger, we might not even do one, but if we do go that route later on, we're just gonna Cut this in here and put a dash eight straight from the pump. And we're gonna have an access panel in this car, so it'll, easy to, it'll be easy to do. And just tighten that down. And we are good. We made the hose, we're putting a 45 degree fitting here. Okay, over here, the one we cut, we're just gonna put a Vacuum cap all the way in and put a little hose clamp here and tighten her down. And now the dash six return. And we're done. So this is our final product. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in now. And stick her in. So you get this in first. The O ring in there, don't forget that, then the middle ring. It's all good. Alright, so this is pretty much it. We painted the gas tank and I put some rubber hose on this, zip tied them. 
This is gonna go straight down. This also this car also has a trap door, so we cut this over here, and you can disconnect this here and disconnect this here. This whole tending unit will fit right out the trap door. I'm not gonna show this, but I'm gonna put this whole gas tank right back in. All right, the four nine inches in. This is a Moser nine inch. Springs are sitting where they're supposed to be in the perches. Pan hard bar, track bar. The shielding over here on top. Everything's in. Now we're gonna do the fuel lines up here. Okay, we're gonna mount the fuel filter over here. I'll give you the part numbers of the fuel filter and that clamp. So I'm gonna make one hole there, and another hole on this side. This is the part number for the clamp. And this is the automotive part number. So go ahead and install that. They really give you no room here, so we're using an opening. Put the filter in, make sure the flow is going towards the front of the car. And we're gonna put a 45 here and one of the little holes here to the hard lines. Okay, and tighten this down. Alright, so I put the fitting there. And I'm gonna cut it, give it a little more slack. I'll probably cut it right there. All right, so that's what it looks like. We're gonna clamp the return line over there. And now we're gonna put the hard lines here, make these to the hard lines. And we'll show you what hard lines we're using. So this is, this is the hard line that we're going to use. This is a copper nickel line. This is from the stopshop.com. And I like to also put this gravel protector on it. You have everything you need in that web, on that website. It's really good. All right, so we did the feed, the half inch pipe. Uh, we used some heat wrap over here. I'll show you that part number later. And we also use the slinky, I call it slinky, gravel protector. All the way over there. Now what we used first was this magnetic tool, pickup tool. And we formed that where we wanted it, which hugs the frame rail and goes into the front of the car. I'll show you how that looks later once we mount the stuff. So now we're going to use this as our guide, as a template to do the 3 8 line. All right, now we're going to straighten this out. This bends very, very easily by hand. So we can just put it on the floor. I'll step on it over here. And my lovely assistant, Moesha, can straighten it out. Hold on. There you go. And that's all it takes to lay her out straight on the floor. All right, now we're just going to follow that. As you can see, this bends real easily. I'm just gonna follow this whole line. Okay, so we're gonna use this. And the part number is right here. And like we did this one, we marked it where we need to do it on this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. This has an adhesive backing. So, Get it right in the middle. One thing to note, I like to put this away from the header. So the header is over here, and you're gonna wrap this like this. Then we're gonna use metal zip ties. Nice. Alright, so we're just gonna continue, go up to here. Now we put the slinky on. Right now we're just going to flare this, we put a tube, tube nut and a sleeve on it. We do the same exact procedure we did on top with the bisending unit. So, and once we do that, we're going to put it on the car. 
And the last thing I like to do before I put the lines back in the car is blow them out with some compressed air. Right. And that's gonna go in. So that's what it looks like from on top. Okay, and that's from underneath. And we're gonna put this one in now. We're putting insulated clamps over here. So we're gonna run it along the stock routing for the fuel lines. All right, over here we're using a male to male dash six union and a straight fitting connect the return line. So we're just going to go ahead and put those together. Alright, so we clamped everything down, put the breather here for the vent tube, clamp down the filter, and make, made it all run over here. Everything is nice and tight. All the way up there. So a few lines are done underneath the car into the gas tank. Alright, we're gonna put the trans back in. We're actually gonna put a level 10 transmission here, but we're gonna bring it um, to their shop and we do it over there. But just to bring it there, we're gonna put this transmission back in. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put these uh, adapters so we could put Teflon lines, Stubray lines to a cooler that we have. And this is the part number for that. It's 551114 ICT billet Mix that And you convert that to a dash 6 male And it also comes with O-rings So I'm going to put one here And I'm going to take this off and put one right over here You dab a little butter sauce on the, on the O-ring Stick it in And we're good. We made the lines. Alright, one thing I like to do before I put this in is make sure you grab the torque converter and spin it a couple of times and make sure it's fully seated. If this isn't fully seated, it could ruin your transmission. So now we're ready to go in. And in she goes. You gotta line this with the dowel pins up there. There, baby. And the other side. Now, a little issue I'm running into right now is Right here, there's way too much clearance between the flex plate and the torque converter. For GM, over here the spec should be anywhere from an eighth inch to a sixteenth of an inch. And we have too much here. If it sits too forward, you risk damaging the pump of the transmission and the transmission itself. So, and also if you have no clearance here, that's also bad. You can risk damaging the back of the transmission over here. The torque converter is going to hit where the pump sits over there. So let me show you what I'm going to do here. So these are the washers I'm going to put in. You can just get them from Home Depot or Lowe's. These are grade 8 washers and that's the part number. So I have three of them and these actually spec out to 64 thousandths, 0.064 of an inch. And that's, what we, that's the exact clearance that we need. Let me show you on the car what I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm gonna put that there, and I have an eighth inch drill bit. And it's a tight fit. And that's exactly what you want right there. Okay, now the reason this is happening is because we have a 400 crank in here that was internally balanced. Usually you put a 400 uh, crank flex plate on there, which has raised bosses here, 
that meet up with the torque converter that gives you the correct clearance. In this case, since it was internally balanced, we can't use a 400 flex plate. So we went with internally balanced flex plate for 350. And that's why we're having this issue. These are the ARP bolts we're using. And it comes with this little instruction thing over here. It gives you the different size fasteners and their torque specs with the ARP lube. So we have M10 by 1.5. We have 50 foot pounds we're going to torque these down to. So let's install these. All right, so I'm going to put some of this underneath the head over here. I put just a drop of blue Loctite on the threads in the bottom and put this in. Put the washer in there. All right, that's hand tight. Now I'm not going to tighten this all the way down. I'm going to do the other two. And the last one. And now I'm going to go ahead around and slowly tighten them all up. Okay, now put a vice scoop there so flex plate is move. And torque this down to 50 foot pounds. And I'm just going to turn the flex plate and do all of them like that. Uh, another thing I like to do is I'm going to put a white mark on this one just to signify that it's been torqued down. And that was the last one. Okay, so we test fit this tubular torque arm from Spohn Performance onto this uh, Moser 9 inch from Quick Performance. And as you can see, these bolt holes don't line up here. Uh, the ones to the right should be more in so they could uh, line up with the holes. So what we have to do here is we probably have to grind down both the torque arm bracket and the quick performance bracket. So we're gonna, I'm going to mark it with the white marker here. And we're going to go ahead to cutting. Alright, so we just took, took the two bolts off from this and it popped right out. We have it on the bench over here. And we're just going to cut this ear off and cut the top ear off. Okay, after some test fitting back and forth, it turns out we also had to modify the torque on bracket. And this is what we came up with. We cut it over there, all around over there. And back here, we had to notch a little bit to clear this nut and bolt over here. Also cut the bottom bracket and cut it, the tabs off where I showed you before, top and bottom. And finally got the bolts in. So that's the finished product. All right, now I'm just gonna assemble this over here on the bench. I put washers on top. Put washers on the bottom too. But if you're using stock bolts, do not use washers at all. Cause it's not gonna have enough threads in the bottom to thread onto the nut. And we're gonna use a washer in the bottom, like I said, and this nut over here. And I put some blue Loctite on these threads. And make sure you put the bolts on from the top because say if you put it in the bottom and something breaks on top, the bolts will fall right out. This way, if something breaks in the bottom, the bolts will still hold it in place. So we're going to go ahead and torque these down. Alright, so we're going to put the front of the torque arm in first over here. Then we're going to put the whole, this whole back bracket in one piece. I'm going to turn the top a little bit. Okay, now we got the we got the fuel lines here, so we have to be careful. So we're gonna put this in first. And a washer goes in there, or a spacer. And now we can go down with this, put the other side on. We're putting a flat the head on this side so we have enough clearance for the fuel lines. Tighten the top one to 100 foot-pounds. And the bottom goes to 50 foot-pounds. Okay, now these are tying to, I'm gonna tie them down to 50 foot-pounds. 
And I also put some blue Loctite on these, so. And the mount is good. And the whole torque arm is in with the mount. All we gotta do now is set the pin angle when it's on the ground later. And this is what it looks like all installed. All right, so I'm gonna change the U-joint. It's a conversion U-joint. Part number Moog 447. It's a 1330 to a 1350 conversion joint. And I already have a video on how to change these things, so I'm gonna put that link in the description below. Go ahead and put that on here. All right, I'm gonna pull the butt, the butt plug out. Pop this drive shaft in. Line up the spleen, spleens, I mean splines. That in. And on this end, you just pull it and stick it in just like that. These are the Moroso straps we're gonna use on a nine inch, 1350, that's the part number. And it comes with lock washers and the nuts. Go ahead and put this on. Fits like a glove, baby. Put some blue lock, thread locker on here. I'll put a pry bar in the middle there because it's in neutral right now, so. And we're done. The stock rear sway bar has these brackets here that the end links go through. I'm throwing these out and I'm putting in a spone drag sway bar in the back over here. Okay, now we have the car on blocks in all four corners. We're going to put the sway bar in. Uh, we're going to put the shackles in. This has three inch axle tubes. And once we put the shackles in, we're going to put the end links in at the ends. Tighten the end links down and tighten the shackles down. We also have to adjust this, but we're not going to do adjustment today. We're going to keep that later on because we have to adjust the front coilovers. Then we're going to adjust the sway bar here. Then we're going to do the torque arm for the pinion angle. So right now we're just going to put the shackles in. All right, put some grease in here, supplied grease. We're going to pop these in first here. And these are going to go like this on the axle tubes and do the same thing on the other side. All right, so put the shackle in on one side. Put the jack underneath. And jack this thing up. There's a washer, then a nut. Okay, that's in, and this is in. Okay, now we already put those in there. They go, they go where the old ones went. The brackets, and pop this nut on. And do the same thing on the other side. All right, so what you gotta do now is you gotta center this bar. So we're gonna measure from the end of this shock all the way to here, this space here, and make sure it's even on both sides. Then we're gonna tighten down these shackles once it's even. That's a all right, we're just gonna tighten this down and tighten the top, and we're done with the sway bar for now. So for the radiator, we're putting these fittings from Russell. This is the part number, 640331. And this is a champion radiator. These fittings will convert the inverted flares for the transmission cool lines on the radiator to a dash six AN lines so it could run all steel braided Teflon lines throughout the whole cooling side of the transmission. And in she goes. We're using this Earl's stainless steel coil here, uh, the part number is below, and we're opening it up a little bit, and we're installing it in this lower radiator hose, so the hose won't collapse whenever we uh, rev the engine or at high RPM, because we have a high volume water pump. Alright, now we just cut it, and we're twist twisting it in. Oh, one more thing that we did here. We try to twist the ends over here with a little neon nose so it doesn't puncture the hose. So that's pretty much it. Twist it and it's pretty much in there. 
Okay, this is the thermostat we're using, 180 thermostat. And since the dart block does not have a coolant bypass hole, I'm just going to go ahead and drill some eighth inch holes in this thermostat. So one. There you go. I also like to put some silicone lube inside the hoses here. So when it comes time to take them off, they slip right off. So this is the water neck, that's the part number by All Star. And that's what it looks like, it has an O-ring. It swivels around and as you tighten this down, you can fix it where you want it to point. It comes also with the bolts, so I'll put a little Teflon paste on these threads. And that's tight. We're all good now. So we wrapped the transmission cooler lines with some heat wrap and routed them right over the starter. You go like that. They're over there. They're very far away from the headers over there. Put them over here too. Over here. And one's going to go on top. The top hose is going to go inside the radiator. I'll probably do it on the top over there. Then the bottom hose can go straight to the cooler, out the cooler, put another hose into this 90 degree over here on the radiator. Okay, so this is the remote cooling transmission cooling assembly we have here. Comes the fan, it's a Derailly, and it comes with two coolers here. This part number is a 15800. And it comes with brackets. These are dash 8 fittings here, so we got an adapter, a female dash 8 to a male dash 6 to mate to our transmission lines. And we had to cut something over here, this bracket, a piece, sorry. And we put a, piece, a bracket here and a bracket here. And we're going to bolt it up right up here where the battery tray is. So we're going to go put this in there now. We also drilled holes in here to put this. So we're going to go ahead and install this right now. All right. Install her. All right, so that's how it's going to sit. We already drilled holes here, like I said. We're going to tighten this down. All right, so we put one bolt there, and there's another one there, and it's right here. Go ahead and tighten that down. And we're just going to do the other one too over there. Tighten that up, and these over here are nice and tight, and we're pretty much done tightening this up. All right, now we're going to put these on. One over there. We had to bend this back a little bit too, but to put that in there. So we'll go ahead and put that in. Now we got the one that we need to cut. And we caught that one. That's going back back to the transmission. So we pretty much caught everything. We just gotta catch the one on top of the radiator. And everything is done here. We put some rubber hoses here just for further protection to save it, save the hoses from rubbing anywhere. And that's what it looks like. Now we're going to spray paint this black and put the wheel cover down and you won't be able to see anything. Sweet. Alright, and that's good up there. So we're done the transmission lines.
All right, so it's the regular the regulator we're gonna put in, and we already mounted the bracket for it, and it's gonna go like this. So what's gonna happen is this is a dash six return, so I'm gonna make this go to that line, and this is the feed from the gas tank. So we're gonna make a hose going in here, and that is gonna feed the carburetor. That's gonna go around over here, and we'll try to snake it around here and hide it behind the engine. And this, I'm gonna put, this is for a gauge, for fuel pressure gauge inside that we're gonna put. So I'm just gonna tighten everything down here. These are orb fittings, O-ring fittings that go over here. And they adapt to a dash eight here and a dash six here. So I'm gonna tighten all this down and put this in. All right, so I tightened out the other fittings on here. And now this is the last one here. I put a little bit of assembly lube on this O-ring before I install this. I also like to, once I pull these fittings on, blow everything with compressed air in here to make sure there's nothing in there. These are all good. Go ahead and blow this out with some air. A few lines on the rail over here, I'm just going to flare them and I'm going to put this union here with a tube nut and then the hose on there just like that straight over here and this is the return side. I'm going to do the same thing on the feed. Okay, we mounted the regulator on that bracket now. You don't have to go too gorilla on that because you're going to aluminum housing. All right, so this is the setup we're doing the carburetor. We're doing a feed behind it. And we just went to a local parts store, got these fittings. And of course, these are all Teflon lines. We got one of these that goes up in here and you tighten it down with this piece over here. And we're putting a 90 degree over here going this way. We're going to make a line here and the line's going to feed from over there. So we're going to put all these things together. This is a 4150 style one inch space they're going to put on there too. It comes with two gaskets and the studs, but we're using ARP studs for one inch spacer. These are the studs that we're using from ARP. Okay, we put the ARP studs over there, put a gasket, put the spacer on, and another gasket right on top of that. And this is what it looks like. The carburetor on there. We just gotta make one hose from there to there. All right, so I made the line. That's how everything looks. We just gotta tighten this one and we're done. Everything is down to the German torque spec, good and tight. We're holding it straight with the bottom and the top we're gonna turn with this. And it's good. Now before we do the other side of the fuel line, we're just gonna run the, the holly, the bracket that we have there. And these are the part numbers. That's a throttle bracket. And this is the kick down for the GM. This is 700 R4, so we need this also. And that's what it looks like. This is adjustable on top and the bottom. And it comes with two springs. This is for the 4150 style carburetor we're putting on here. This is a, a 750 double pumper, by the way, if you guys are curious to know what kind of carburetor we're putting on here. And we need one of these. We're going to put it here for it's a throttle stud to use it with this. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this on there now. Very important, I always put some red thread locker on this stud here because you don't want this coming off and you got no throttle. Pop it in and we are good. Okay now we adjusted the throttle cable so it's used full throttle when you put the stud in. Always check that. And we're using this corrector, TV corrector bracket from Sonix. I'll give you the part number in a second and that goes right there let's go ahead and tighten that down we are good this is the TV cable corrector we're using it's part number AS4-04K alright so we move this back 
actually, we actually flipped this around and put this more back. This stays where this stayed where it was at. And now we put this on here. Uh, the transmission we're going to put in here is a built one from level 10, so it's going to be full pressure all the time. This would be just used for kick down purposes. All right, now my camera girl is going to floor it. Go all the way down. Go all the way down again. All right, stop. All right, that means at full throttle, we're at the plungers all the way when that clicks. And that's how everything sits here with the springs. Everything's tightened down. I also tightened down the carburetor studs, the nuts on them, and the carburetor is good to go. And we good. Now this is what the fuel lines look like. Put a Mendy there. It clears the distributor. It goes behind the master into this regulator. But we're gonna move that over to the side out of there. And we routed it under here. We put a little hose over here to help it not get any abrasions here. Now we have the porn star smoke coming out. And route right it underneath here, out over there. The big thing here is make sure this clears everything, it doesn't touch anything. And the fuel system is pretty much done. This is the MSD box we're putting in, the MSD 6BTM, part number 6462. And this is the retard controller. This is the boost retard controller we're going to put inside the car. And you could actually adjust this for every one pound of boost, you could either go zero degrees retard, or one degree, two or three degrees retarded. So we're gonna mount this inside the engine bay right now. Okay, we're gonna mount the MSD box right here. And there's a little reinforcement bar right here with a 10 millimeter bolt right there. I'm just gonna take that off. All right, so I made some more room. I moved all the wiring behind this front panel over here. So we have all this room here. All right, so I'm gonna mount the box probably right in the middle over there. And I just gotta make a bracket to go from here to here so I can mount this end. All right, so we mounted it in the car and I already made one mark over there. We're gonna put the little vibration damper and another mark here with the punch. So we can drill holes there and there. Use some tap magic to help lubricate the hole. All right, so we painted the brackets black. We put red Loctite on these threads for the screws and the nuts in the back. And we also put a 7,000 RPM pill that's your rev limiter right there, 7,000 RPM. It comes with a few pills in here. So we're gonna go ahead and mount this now on the car. And that's the last one. Okay, now we're gonna mount this coil. It's a blaster coil. And that's what it looks like. Alright, so we put some wire loom on that coil wire and he shrinked the ends of it and it actually looks real nice and we're gonna mount it right there and let me show you something else that was really good that vent back there to get back here you take these washer lines off and you use a panel remover tool here just to pop this out there's a plastic rivet back there and there's a bolt over here a little bolt and this whole thing pops right off and there's also over here too a little rivet also you pop off with that tool and you go back here and put the nuts behind here when you drill the holes to mount the coil I also put a little silicone back here so no water goes inside so now we're going to go ahead and drill those holes
All right, so I'm going to use some black silicone on this, on these threads here. It's like a seal up on the firewall so no water comes in. All right, now we're good, but we're going to put this on. Now we start installing the gauges. The first gauge I'm going to put in is a water temperature gauge. These are all fully electric gauges by autometer. This part number is 3531. This comes with a mounting fixture here. We're not going to use that. We're going to cut these down and we're going to use these cups in the back and mount them inside the car. And these cups, the part numbers are 3202. And make sure you get the correct um, cup sizes. These are 2 and 5 eighths gauges that we're using. So we need 2 and 5 eighths cups. And the gauge comes with lights. Uh, little plastic covers for lights so you can change colors. It comes to bushings and a temperature sensor. Now we already put a new one of these in, so we're not going to use that. And the mounting hardware is right here like this. It comes with a spacer in here, screws, the loop, and these screws to, to mount it wherever you're going to mount it. It also comes with a grommet here put the wires through. So we go ahead and put this in now. All right, now this will fit in there. And this is just for mock-up purposes. This hole goes underneath and this goes like this. To get mounted like that. So now we're going to put a few of these together and mount them in, see it, and mark them underneath the dash where they're going to go. Alright, now I'm using a soapstone here and just marking where I'm going to put this gauge. And I'm going to do the same thing with this one here. Alright, now I took it apart. I just have the bracket here. And I'm going to start drilling these holes. the first screw in and I'll drill the other hole and this one's in all right so I put the cups back in and that's what it looks like and we're gonna do the same thing over here we're gonna put three over here and the last one is mounted so that's what they're going to look like. Alright, now the last thing we're going to mount is this Pro Light. This is a warning light if the oil pressure drops below a certain PSI. And this is it. We changed the cover here to a blue one. We didn't like the red one. We also changed that to a blue cover on the inside. You just push that in and turn it counterclockwise and it pops out and change the cover. And we're going to go ahead and mount this to the car. All right, I'm going to mount it over here under this tack. So this pops right off. And there's two seven millimeter bolts on the bottom that you got to take off. Put them both off. And now I'm going to put it on the side over there. I put wire loom here and a piece of heat shrink over here. And I'm go ahead and shrink this down. And that's what it looks like. All right, I also put some red thread locker there and ready to pop these in. Done. All right, and that's all mounted. All right, this is the coil wire over here, this pink one. We're going to use this as a switch 12 volt. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to wire up the fuel pump relay with this because uh, the customer wants the fuel pump on a switch so I'm gonna run the ground inside the car to a switch to activate the fuel pump and that's gonna feed that's just gonna energize the switch side of the power side of the relay and I'm also gonna use this to do the same thing on the transmission cooler and also using this on the MSD box and I'm going I'm to put a 5 amp fuse on this, even though it's a huge ass wire here. I'm just going to put a 5 amp fuse just in case. 
So I'm going to go ahead and do that. These are the fuse holders I'm using. And these are nice because these are weather tight. And it comes with two terminals too. Alright, I have to install this. You got to put this on first. Then you got to run this through here and put the terminal on there. And now you pull it in. Pop the fuse in. Pop this on. And I could use this to power all the stuff that I need to power here. All right, so it's a fuel pump relay. So what we're going to do here is D and F is the switch side of the circuit of the relay. I'm going to put one side, probably D. I'm going to use this wire that we just put a fuse on, the switched 12 volt. That's going to go on D. And F, I'm going to put one wire here. There's a ground wire here. I'm going to put one wire straight inside to a switch. Then the other side, that switch is going to come out and it's going to go to the F side of this relay. So when he turns the key on, this will give power to the D side and then you can flip the switch and the F side will have ground and it will magnetize this and it will switch it over from E to A and it's going to give power to this gray wire straight to the fuel pump in the back. Okay, the D and F terminals, the switch side of this relay, there's, le there's letters underneath each terminal here. D is over here and F is over here. So you could trace these, see where they go in here on the relay, and it'll give you the wires in the back, which wires you need to cut. Another way to tell which is a switch circuit, you see the two terminals over here, they're the smallest ones, because it requires the least amperage, uh, the switch side of the circuit. So the two smaller ones is the switch side. And these are the two wires. Okay, so I'm putting two wires here. This is a switch 12 volt, going for, on the green white wire. Again, this is a switch 12 volt, and this is going to go. I'm also going to put this on the MSD box and the trans cooler relay. After connection like that, it's always a good idea to put a piece of black tape at the end over there. And this will be the ground side of the relay, and I'm just going to wire this inside the car. Um, you guys don't have to see this, but you get the idea. All right, now this wire here feeds the factory tachometer, and there's an aftermarket one in here too, so it, the signal split. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to route these wires straight to the MSD box and I'll show you what that is in a second. As you can see over there, I put a little mirror there, there's a little spade by the spigot where the vacuum line goes and that's the tack output. So I'm just going to connect those wires both over there. And now I'll quickly go over how to wire this MSD box. Pretty straightforward. There's two thick wires one red, one black, one, and they go straight to the battery, positive and negative. That's straight, that's straight forward. This over here is a connector, and this goes straight to the distributor, and that's done. Just one connection. We have a switched 12 volt, where I brought the switch 12 volt from up there, over here. And this switch 12 volt is going to go to the relay for the transmission cooler. Then we have a red... Sorry, we have an orange and a black wire coming out of here, and that goes straight to the coil right there. And you just put spades on them and connect it right there. That's a really straightforward connection. I don't want to show you guys all this because this is just me, you know, crimping wires and, and putting them on. Not a big deal. And the white wire in this case is not used. Uh, we also have the Boost Retard Controller. And this is it. And I routed this into the firewall over there and they give you a weather pack over here terminal just pop this on and it goes right there so I'm good I'm gonna put this on clip it there and I'm gonna put those two wires over here to the spade connector for the tech signal and this MSD whole MSD thing is done alright so this is the fan relay for the, for the remote mount trans I put in. And this works the same way, all the relays work the same. I already told you how the relay works. And I just wired everything up. This is coming from inside the car. There's a switch inside to a ground. And I connected the switch 12 volt here. And this is the power to the 
straight to the battery over here and I put a 10 amp fuse in here it's only a 5 amp motor and I connected it to a bus bar over here and all these wires are going to be loomed so it's going to look nice and neat and over here I put the power side of the relay feeding to the fan is right here and this is the ground to the battery and I put this on a weather pack connector so I, all you have to do is to, to take the fan out you disconnect this and this drops and you take the fan out so I'm just going to mount this relay over here and hide it in there and be done with it and that's mounted and it's nice and hidden alright now it's time to wire all these gauges since I have five gauges and one warning light to wire up, I just pretty much put everything on a piece of paper and how I'm going to do it. Just so everything laid out in front of me and all I have to do is just follow this. And no more thinking required. So what I did here was, this is a wide band sensor, fuel pressure sensor, trans temp, water temp and oil pressure sensor. Now for the wide band sensor, it comes with oxygen sensor and this clip, this harness, and this clips back into the gauge. Let me show you on the gauge. And it gets clipped right there. And the only other thing you would have to do here is wire up the light. And there's actually two wires here, loose wires that we're gonna use. And that's the red and black. And those go to switch 12 volt for the red with three amp fuse on it and the black goes to engine ground and I pretty much labeled everything else here what I need to do these are pretty straightforward the fuel pressure sender is going to get mounted on the fuel pressure regulator and same thing, same. there's a harness with that too that goes in the back of the fuel pressure gauge that's the harness right there and there's one loose black wire which goes to engine ground and there's a loose red wire that goes to switch 12 volt. And trans temp, water temp, and oil pressure are pretty much the same thing. This is what they look like in the back. There's an I, S, and a ground terminal. I is ignition switch 12 volt. And I'm going to put that an ignition switch 12 volt that also is on when it's cranking. So if you have uh, no fuel pressure, you'll see it. And S is for the sender, it goes straight to the sender and ground will be engine ground. So what I did here was I marked everything. One means I need one wire from here going into the engine bay from inside the car. And A and B means I'm gonna, I'm gonna connect all these A's together and all these B's together. A is pretty much ignition switch 12 volts and B's are engine ground. I'm gonna connect all these to one wire, gonna go inside to the back of the head or the firewall and put it right there and there's one more thing I gotta wire up besides the oil warning light uh, is the lights but let me go back here for a second this is the oil warning light and black goes straight to the sender so that's one wire going to the sender and the white is switch 12 volt which is A which will be connected to these A's uh, and these are the lights they all come with lights like this a black wire and a white wire now what I'm going to do, it's pretty straightforward, I'm just going to connect the blacks with the blacks, the whites with the whites, and go straight up through the dash here, go over, and this is the white, will be uh, 12 volt, the, the, I'm going to put this on a relay, so when the lights inside go on, or the headlights go on, these will light up, it will energize this relay and light up, give power to all these uh, lights. And the blacks of course are all going to be connected together and going to go to a uh, ground. So this ground is going to go inside the car. I'm not going to bring that outside. One thing I forgot to mention is I'm also going to use fuses here. For these lights here, the light bulbs, on the power side, I'm going to use a 5 amp fuse when I connect all these together. And I'm using a 16 gauge wire. Over here, I'm also using another fuse on the wide band. This is a dedicated uh, 12 volt switch connection here. And it's a 3 amp fuse. And for the rest of the power side of the, all the gauges, I'm going to connect them all together. Again, everything 16 gauge wire, and I'm going to use a 5 amp fuse 
when I put that all together. So that's pretty much how I'm gonna wire everything. I just know I, I'm gonna show you little snippets here and there of what I'm doing, because I don't want to bore you guys with a million terminals I'm gonna cut and splice and do a bunch of crazy stuff here. So let's begin. All right, I have the dash pad off. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a hole right here in this plastic. It's gonna be right back here. And that's gonna pass the wires through for these uh, this side of the gauges. So the wide band gauge is pretty much wired up on the gauge side. I had to cut this wire because I had to lengthen it, and that was good because it helped me put it in this grommet and also threw the grommet on the firewall. So this is pretty much it. I still have to wire this and I have to connect these wires and the rest is over here. So let me put this together now. Put the grommet through the through the slot over here and that's pretty much it and I'm gonna point that that way I'm gonna put a wire loom here and you're not gonna even see that when it goes inside and the fuel pressure gauge is also wired on the gauge side okay this is my transmission temperature gauge and the signal wire here is blue I put a little vacuum cap here to, to shield that stud that I cut off it's a little sharp edge on it so that's what that looks like and the rest of the other gauges are pretty much the same as this so I'm going to go ahead and wire all the gauges now alright so what I did here was I just made a second hole because the, the, the first one was too small to fit everything through so what, I, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to I'm gonna, these are just for the lights to light the gauges up, the bulbs and this is for everything else so there's actually a light bulb here that goes into here but it doesn't really illuminate much so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this uh, this actually goes on, let me show you when you hit the lights, that goes on so we're going to use that to power the relay and the relay will energize these lights here I'm going to run all fresh new wiring for it I'm going to probably go into the fuse block for the battery feed and I'm gonna put a 5 amp fuse on that circuit that goes to, to feed uh, the, the gauges so I'm gonna go ahead now and use this wire here I'm gonna check to see which wire it is, it's probably the black sorry it's probably the white one that's power so I'm just gonna check which wire is the power and take that off and put it on the switch side of the relay I just want to show you guys back here in this cup what I'm doing I put the wire loom I put a heat shrink sleeve over here now I'm just gonna put everything here and fit this inside the heat shrink just like that and now here just shrink it down and that's what it looks like in the back all right now I made three fuses here, three fuse holders, and some wires. Uh, I also labeled these. We're going to have two ignition hots, which is the gauge power and the wideband power. And one is going to be battery all the time, which is the gauge lights. And those two spots are right over here. Ignition. This is ignition 12 volt, 12 volt ignition hot. And on this side is the battery hot all the time. So what I do was I just, one side of the fuse, I put a spade. And that goes right into the slot right there. And you're good to go. So these are all ready to be put into, into the car right now. All right, the wiring is all done. It's a bit of a mess here, but it's all done. I just gotta wire loom everything. And over here, I popped, it was like a little panel over there where the light went into. It looks like this. And I popped that out, and I fit all the wires through there on top. So I had to make some more space over there. So everything is good. We, we uh, pretty much daisy chained all the grounds and the
positive wires. So now I'm just going to put the dash pad on. I'm going to pull the wires. I have some wires here I still got to pull through the firewall, but everything is done up here so I can put the dash pad on. And now I'm ready to connect the sensors to the wires. Alright, so I started pulling the wires through here. These are the sending unit wires. And over here I have the gauge grounds. This goes behind the head over there. And I have the oil pressure and the oil pressure indicator light, warning light. And that's going to go over there. I'm also going to do the water temp sensor over there. And the trans temp is over here. I'm going to route that underneath to the transmission. So go ahead and do that. And everything is also labeled. Uh, we got a little street elbow. Eighth male to eighth female. What we're going to do, we're going to put the pressure transducer here. The pressure sensor. I put some uh, blue Teflon tape on here, monster tape. We're going to put this on here. Probably face it that way. Uh, we're going to start the car. Actually, we're going to pressurize the fuel system first. We'll probably paint this black later on. But for now, we just want to pressurize the fuel system and see if there's any leaks. Ready to pressurize. All right, now we're gonna pressurize the fuel system. Remember, we have the fuel pump on a switch inside, and this is backed out all the way counterclockwise. It puts less pressure on the spring, which means therefore less pressure on the diaphragm and the poppet, um, which also means more gas will go in the return line. So that's the lowest pressure. Once you start going clockwise, you're gonna increase the spring pressure in here which also effectively increase the fuel pressure. So right now we're all the way to the left and we went a couple of turns clockwise so we should be probably around 2-3 psi or something like that and we're going to adjust it to about 6 psi and leave it there and we're going to check all the fuel lines, we're going to put our hands around the fittings, make sure there's no gas on it and we do that throughout the whole fuel system also underneath the car. So right now I'm going to have somebody adjust this pressure regulator as I turn the fuel pump on. And the fuel pressure is right there. Fuel pump is on. We're at about 4, four PSI, so adjust, uh, clockwise adjust a little bit. Keep adjusting clockwise. Keep going, keep going. More, 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 more. A, a hair off. Right there. So we go to fuel pressure. Now we're gonna check all the fuel lines. All right, so all the fuel lines look pretty good. Make sure there's no leaks by the carburetor, by the bowls or anything. And everything looks pretty good. So we're set to fuel pressure. We're also gonna check underneath the car. And no leaks down here either. We're all good. Down here, we're going to put the wideband O2 sensor on. That goes in just like that. And we're just going to zip tie this on top over there. For the transmission temperature gauge, I put a weather pack connector here. I routed this line underneath the car. And this is what it comes with, the autometer gauge. Now you can either get a welding bung to weld this to the pan, or you can get this transmission drain plug kit from BNM, part number 80250. And this in the middle has an eighth inch NPT port where you could put this sensor in. And uh, if you want to see how to install this, I'm going to put a, video, a link to the video underneath in the description on when I put a transmission drain plug in a car. So we're just going to leave this out for now. And we're going to bring this to the trans guy, and he's going to put that in for us. All right, we're going to also make some brake lines here. We've got the new brake lines, the rubber ones to go here, and we're going to put the stock bracket here, so it can route through here. And we're going to make lines, copper nickel lines, around here, and make another one go straight to the front of the car. Now, whenever you change the rear end, you're going to probably have to mess around with this. You could put the stock ones back on, but... Uh, I'll give you a little snippets of here what we're doing. 
It's nothing fancy. And we'll go ahead and get started with that. All right, so we put we put the hose here, and we put this out of the, off the stock rear end, and that's just to hold it. We're gonna weld that. We'll put some couple tacks here to hold that in place, and this is just gonna go like this through here, and we're gonna make the hard line to go over this. All right, you go to your local AutoZone. They carry this or your auto parts dealer. This is the copper nickel weld line we're using. It's a 3 16th line. And we also got the spring for it, the gravel protector, just like we did the fuel lines from the stopshop.com. And we also got these fittings over here for this 316 slide, but this one already has it. So uh, we got fittings also for this. This is the quarter inch line that we're using for the front of the car. So we're just going to show you a little piece on how we do this and put it on the car. That's First thing we do is put the spring on, then measure it to length and cut that with a pair of my dikes. Alright, now we put it over there. We're gonna bend this over, Greek style, and put it over the pumpkin into the T block, which is right there. So once we bend it, then we're gonna cut it and flare it. That's a bubble flare right there. So I'll show you how to do a bubble flare. Cut it where you want it. Clean that up a little bit. A little screwdriver. All right, for brake lines, I just want to add, this is a bubble flare fitting. And for inverted flare fitting, you're not going to have that end over here, like that. So, you're going to have to use one of these for bubble flare. Pop that in, and pop in the 3 16 part of the clamp. And make sure it sticks out about a quarter of an inch. Get the 3 16 die, pop that in. Tighten that down, and crank it down until it meets the block. See how it comes out. It's perfect. Now put it back on the car and tighten her down. All right, now we put the air cleaner on and we run a linkage through its motions and you see here these return springs actually hit the base of the air cleaner. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put little spaces underneath to space this up a little bit. This is what we're putting in, an air riser kit. It's Speed by Spectre, part number 4954. And if you open this up, you have different sizes in here. And you can also stack them up. So we we'll probably just need this. So we're gonna put this in and see if that helps. Now you could try it and you see everything clears. So that's perfect now. This is the air cleaner stud that we're using from Mr. Gasket. That's the part number 6399. And it comes with the rod, an adapter, and a wing nut. So this adapter goes into the carburetor. We put a little bit of red Loctite on this because you don't want this coming off. I'm going to thread this into the carburetor and we're going to cut this to fit. That's good. And mark it right there. And the air cleaner is on. Alright, this is the first start. Now remember, this engine was dynoed before. So it should start right up. So let's turn the key, turn the fuel pump on. And this is first start, boys and girls. We also have the spool free funnel in there for the antifreeze. Woo! Yeah, baby!
All right, so we ran it. I made sure the thermostat opened. It sucked in water. We took the spill-free funnel off. Uh, we made sure the fan kicked on, the coolant fan. Everything looks good. We're gonna check for leaks. And we're good to go with the engine now. All right, now since this is a convertible, we're also putting in inner subframe connectors here. The outer one's already in here, as you can see here. And these are some flip connectors we're putting in from Heights, part number AL-102411. And they tie in the inside frame up to the transmission mount frame. So since I already have a video on how to install subframe connectors, I'm not going to show this process. I'll just put the link in the description below on how to do that. All right, so I just welded these, these subframe connectors in here. And that's how they go in. And this is the other side. And all we have to do now is spray paint these. And we're done with these. And that's what you got. The diodon white pipe, you have to weld a piece over here right in the middle of the white pipe. So we did that. And we're gonna hit this with some barbecue paint. Uh, we pretty much mounted the exhaust. And this runs along the tunnel over here. And of course, this is reversal of removal. And the muffler's out back here. All right, I want to mention we also ran a beater weld over there on the rear sway, the, the drag sway bar in the back. Okay, now the rear sway bar, we're gonna put a tack over there so the shackle doesn't move. Okay, the first adjustment we're doing is right height. So it crawls off the ground, and you can actually do this by hand here. And we're just pretty much aiming to get 27 inches, about 27 inches from this fender lip here, all the way down. Alright, so that's exactly 27 inches. We pretty much level there in the center of the wheel. So we're not slanted over anywhere. So, that is set. And to raise the car, you gotta go, you gotta bring the spring up. You gotta turn the nut, so you can lower the spring down, and the whole car comes with it. All right, so whenever you measure that ride height, I forgot to mention, also move the car back and forward a couple of feet just to make sure everything settles. Uh, we got it within about a sixteenth of an inch ride height on both sides. Uh, we're going to drive around a little bit, come back, we check that. Now we're doing the toe in, toe out, and I have a video on how to do this. You just put two straight bars on both tires, make sure that's level, and you put a measuring tape on one end and measuring tape on the other end here. And you turn the tie rods until you get the same measurements on both. Uh, that video link will also be in the description below. All right, so we got 69 and a half about here, and the same thing over there. I don't know if you can see that. So we're pretty much straight. We also had the steering wheel straight when we did this, and we're good. We could uh, tighten down the tie rods and bring this to a shop. Now to adjust the pinion angle, I'm not going to go into detail on how to do it. Uh, I'm going to leave that for a future video because there's a lot to explain here. Pretty much you need an angle finder like what I have here. And over there you have the pinion angle that I'm measuring. And you adjust the torque arm to move the pinion angle around. And then you put the angle finder on the drive shaft. And the difference between the drive shaft angle and the pinion angle in this case should be negative 1. That's the angle I like to use on modified, slightly modified vehicles, which this is. All right, now these end links over here, I loosen the jam nuts because they are adjustable. And what you gotta do is you gotta have the rear tires on the ground, and the front tires are barely off the ground. We put something in the camera over there to hold it up, and the driver is sitting in the seat. And what we gotta do is we gotta adjust those until the door jam on this side all the way down to the ground is a sixteenth of an inch lower on the driver's side than the passenger side. Alright, so we got that measurement. What we did was we used a, T a drywall T-square to put on the floor. Then use this on the jam nut, on the, on the door jam, sorry, to make that level. And we uh, took the measure from the top here on both sides. 
So we are exactly 1 16th lower on the driver's side with the driver in the car and the wheels, the front wheels barely off the ground. All right, so we put some blue thread locker on these end links here and tighten up the jam nuts. And we're pretty much done. Oh, we also checked to see if the rear end's centered because we have an adjustable pan hard bar here. That's actually really easy to do. You put the car on the ground and you put a bob weight down here from on top and make sure the, the distance from the bob weight to the center of the car, sorry, the wheel, is the same on both ends. If not, you're going to have to adjust this right here. This was dead on balls accurate, so we're good. All right, so we did everything in this car. We got the exhaust up here. Um, I showed you just the most important things to do in this car when you build one of these cars. I don't want to show you the whole thing because it would have been a 10 hour video. That's why I was showing snippets. Uh, this is a fourth gen rear end. It's a Mosa 9 inch quick performance. It's a 350 gear. So, through the drag bar, we did brand new fuel lines, copper nickel. We put uh, new brake lines also. These are sulfur connectors here we put in. It's a torque arm. We've got two drive shaft loops. We're going to put either a chromoly uh, drive shaft in or a carbon fiber one. That's next. It's got an exhaust cut out over here. We have a wire here for the temperature sensor for the pan. Everything clears nicely. Everything's brand new here. Put brand new brakes, bearings, everything's brand new. Tie rods, the whole steering is new, steering gearbox is new. We put a Z28 quick ratio in. Everything and everything is brand new. This is just a shell. New power, new power steering cooling lines here. And a transmission cooler right here. That's pretty much it. I'm gonna drop the car on the ground. Alright, so we buzzed everything up. It sounds pretty good. Got a healthy little cam. Everything looks good. Uh, we're just filling up a little bit of the transmission fluid. Also the power steering fluid. We're also going to take it to an alignment shop to get it done on the machine. That's pretty much it. We go for a test drive right now. Alright, so we got this beast on the road. Everything looks good. We have a check engine light. It's probably the carburetor. So, got the lights on. Everything is kosher. So thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Like me, share me. Also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. See ya!